Oh, do I feel fatherly now? I just had a baby, you guys. Do I look good? Just had a baby. So I'm gonna give you guys some fatherly advice in this video as it pertains to e-bikes, okay? Got a, another custom e-bike build for you. This one is the Fazari Wasatch Peak Hardtail Mountain Bike. I'm gonna go over this bike, what we did to it, what makes this bike awesome, and why you should want one. If you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerd Out. I do custom e-bike builds. Go to johnnynerdout.com if you wanna buy components, if you want to book a phone call with me, a video call with me, if you're having problems with your bike, if you're having questions about building your bike, how do you spec out everything? We'll go over everything. Over everything. Book a call, call with me. Go to giantnerd.com. I love talking e-bikes. If you can't tell by now, it's what I do. It's my problem. But yeah, soon it'll be your problem. Okay, so this is uh, Fazari. This is a Utah brand. That's where we're at here. We're in Utah right now. They are, I think they're down in like Orem or Provo or something like that. But they make mountain bikes. And this is the Wasatch Peak. Um, this is a hardtail. This is a nice bike. Fazari makes good bikes. If you're ever curious about, probably haven't heard of them. They're like, ah, I haven't heard of it. It's not Trek or Specialized. Fazari makes good bikes. And this was a customer who went down to the shop, picked it up, and then brought it up to me. So you can see it's got hydraulic front brakes and rear brakes. I think these are 180. Yeah, these are 180 rotors. So these have got big rotors on it. These things will break, no problem. Um, they're Tektro, Tektro hydraulic brakes. Uh, it's got a SRAM 12-speed cassette in the rear, so that thing is a huge cluster. Look at that, 12 speeds. It's almost too many. Honestly, you will get tired of shifting because you're going to be shifting every second. I like I like having 9 speeds. I think 9 speeds is good, but look at the size of that gear. I think this is a 44 tooth. And then we went with a 42 tooth Lecky up front. This one had a weird chain line. The chain line was too far away from the motor because we had to put spacers to get the motor to not hit the chainstay. And that's an issue that happens with a lot of bikes, mainly mountain bikes and fat tire bikes. Um, if you're trying to convert like a Surly, those notoriously have this issue where the chain stay comes out really aggressively and the motor will then hit it. So you have to put the motor out farther, but now that chain line is way out far. So you have to get a chain ring to bring that chain line back in close. Otherwise the chain just wants to do like a left turn when it's going into that lowest gear and it just wants to jump off all the time. The 42 tooth, I find the Lecky 42 tooth has yet to fail me. And I really like that one when I have chain line issues because it's small enough where you still get really good torque, but it it's offset enough. I think it's like a 19 or a 21 millimeter offset that brings it in. So it's like the best of both worlds. It's got a really good offset, better than the 36, but it doesn't have the as small of a gear ratio as the 36, but you know, all things considered, this one's a really good chain ring. Uh, we went with the BBS HD. This is a 68 millimeter motor. We went with a 52 volt, 17 and a half amp hour battery with LG cells. So this thing is gonna have, I'm gonna guess between 30, 40 mile rides. Uh, if you're riding it really hard, you could definitely get 60, 70 miles out of this if you're riding it conservatively, if you're pedaling with it well. For the display, we went with the 850C display. This one has a USB charging port here, so it's really nice if you wanna like, you know, charge your phone. If you don't need this, you know, I recommend going with the 500C, but it is nice to have that USB if you ever need to charge something. Yeah, you can see this is just, it's a comfortable bike. It's got super wide handlebars, so you just feel like you're in control of this thing. Uh, this was a tip that I got from one of the comments. If you think I don't read the comments, I certainly do. Somebody was like, hey, instead of going with that spiral wrap, you should try this uh, this other kind of wrap where it's it totally covers it. You see, I don't like to cover the gear shift cable. You don't want to put bends on it. I like to let the gear shift cables just kind of go where they go. But all the electrical cables you could put in here and then zip tie it. And I think it looks a little bit nicer like this, honestly. Usually I just use spiral wrap to, to clean it up. And both work fine, it's totally personal preference, but do something to clean up that, the wiring mess. Zip tie it first, do a lot of zip ties on it, and then spiral wrap or you know a sleeve of whatever you want, but just make it look nice, because we're, we're out there representing the DIY community and we don't want people making fun of us saying, it looks like a Franken bike. Maybe yours does, but ours don't. I think, in my opinion, I think this looks like a nice build. And I'm happy with how it came out. This thing's gonna have crazy hill climbing, I'm not going to be doing a Johnny Nerd Out performance test because we just got a whole bunch of snow and it just melted. So that little 
spot that I do my hill climbing tests on, that's still just a swamp. So I'm sorry because this one would just kill it. With a 44 tooth, this thing would climb that hill no problem. And I'm gonna guess this thing would hit a 35 mile an hour, you know, throttle only speed. It'll go faster if you're pedaling. But 35 is crazy fast for a bicycle. And that's why I like going with mountain bikes if you are going faster. For, in my opinion, they just seem like they're built stronger. They're, they're built to handle those impacts of like hitting jumps and all that. So they could, in my opinion, I feel like they're a little bit better suited to handle motor systems. That's the other reason why I like hardtail mountain bikes, besides them just being Swiss Army knives. So this build like this was about $1,600 without my labor because the chain ring is like 100 bucks that added some money, gear shift sensor and all that. But yeah, about 1600 bucks, you got yourself a crazy good quality e-bike. I think this bike retails, I think he said he got it for about 900. So all in, he was about 2,500 bucks. But spec wise, you're not gonna get anything like this on a pre-made e-bike. <laughs> not even close for 2,500 bucks. And you could put wider tires on here. If someone's like, well, I wanna do some really serious off-roading and some snow and loose gravel, put wider tires on. These are already pretty wide. I think these are, these are 29 by 2.2 inch tires. I think these would handle 29 by 2.8s, I bet. So you would have like a serious off-road beast if you put those on here. Right now it's a little bit more geared towards commuting and you know pedaling. Yeah, hopefully you guys found this helpful. Later.